Well, there's something just so fun and addicting about an OTF, those out the front pocket knives. Well, the Streamlight Wedge takes all those characteristics and slams them into a pocket-friendly flashlight. That's right, folks. Thanks for coming back and joining me on another episode here at Gideon's Tactical, where I'm always doing in-depth gear reviews, helping you guys see pros and cons to the different equipment and gear that's available out there for survival, camping, hiking, EDC, and everything in between. And if you're new here to the channel, I do invite you to subscribe. I'm throwing up content like this every single week. Smash that like button. Leave a comment below if you have any questions throughout this video that maybe I didn't answer. Not only will I do my best to help answer them for you, but it also helps with the algorithm. Rhythm. And you guys are just awesome here. This Gideon's Tactical family that we have, that we've uh, had over the years is just awesome. And I appreciate you guys so much. So in this video, we're taking a look at this Streamlight Wedge. Now I picked this up recently because it looks exactly like that H&K um, made by Hogue. Let me see if I can get it fish it out here. There we go. OTF. I mean, that that is like the spitting image just about. And that's what Streamlight did. They, they kind of saw the functionality, the cool factor, the, you know, designing. We're like, let's put that into a flashlight. And so uh, today I'm going to walk you through what this flashlight has going on, the pros, but also a few cons that I see. They're kind of like, really? Why? Like, why are we doing that? Or if we had just done this, it would have been a lot better. And whether or not this is something to carry as a regular EDC, is it worth the investment because this thing is a pretty penny or not? We're going to answer all that for you today. So right out of the gate, I'm going to hit that party trick with you that really sets it apart from most other flashlights or I think all other flashlights on the market to date is this activation switch. It's up near the front. It is a toggle very similar to the activation switch on your OTFs that make it very easy to engage. Boom, you hit it one time and that's going to give you 300 lumens of power. And if you push and hold forward, that gives you 35 seconds of a thousand lumens. They call it their throw feature. And after 35 seconds, that will drop back down to the 300 or if you just let go the trigger snaps back into the just straight up and down position for 300 lumens and then you snap it back and it turns off. So quick deployment is kind of the name of the game. You can pull it out of your pocket and instantaneously your thumb is right where it wants to be and you just push forward so it's a very simple organic motion and you have big punch illumination. And that's kind of the idea with it. Most other flashlights will have their activation switch on the rear butt cap, which does take an usually, at least in my experience, an extra move to engage the flashlight and turn it on. And so there's just more um, fine motor skills required, whereas this does not require as much motor skills and it's more of an organic, natural way to turn on the flashlight in, in high intensity situations, um, you know, self-defense situations particularly, that makes a lot of sense. The other benefit is the way it's designed in the toggle, uh, it's almost impossible to engage it uh, by accident. I don't know how many times I've gone into my pocket and it feels really hot, you know, digging something else out, and I've accidentally bumped the exterior tail switch of my flashlight and it's draining battery and heating up my pocket and gonna melt my pants. So the fact that this is interior here, and even though you do have to push, it's not like hard, but it's not easy to do that. And because it's down inside the pocket, it's much less likely to be engaged by accident. So I wanna touch this pretty big oversight in my opinion. Now this has an internal uh, battery that we'll touch on a little bit later. And it is uh, charged by a USB-C charger, comes with all that but there is no rubber gasket to cover and protect this uh, plug right here. And I think that's just, just a massive oversight. Even though it is water resistant uh, IPX7, uh, I believe, and it is submergible for 30 minutes, one meter in water, uh, and all those things are positive, just even dust and grime and people who are purchasing this flashlight, I'm sure are kind of in the thick of it a lot of the time and are, are in the elements. And so that the fact that this is completely exposed to the elements that you're gonna have to probably blow out from time to time with like compressed air and it just doesn't have a little rubber gasket is, beyond me. I mean, every other rechargeable flashlight that I own to a T has a little rubberized gasket included. Now I am actually waiting and it's on order to get like self ones that you just like pop in there, but it won't be attached. I'm sure I'm going to lose them, you know, so I had to buy a big pack of it. So I don't know why they didn't include a rubberized gasket just to, to just extra security, extra waterproofness to the overall design. And I think that is a major oversight in my opinion, even though to date, I haven't seen any issues with it actually causing a problem with charging. 
Now this pocket clip totally takes a number from awesome loop over deep ride pocket clips on your favorite pocket knife. Uh, this thing is just so well designed, two screws. It's completely ambidextrous, so you can swap it right or left for the design. It's loop over, so it's gonna have that deep ride. It's gonna be able to go over all of your tactical pants that have like reinforced you know, lips on them. Uh, there is a little hole there for a lanyard that if you wanted to do that, you can carry it in a different way if that's something that you want. But that's just a super well designed, blacked out pocket clip, and I really do like that. Now that goes on to the body itself, that uh, anodized aluminum, you can get it in black or this copper. I love the copper look to it. Uh, it has more of a rectangular slim profile like a pocket knife. Just giving you some side perspective there. Very similar, just a hair thicker than my OTF right there. Uh, which means that it's going to ride in the pocket much better than 90% of your EDC flashlights that you would carry in your pocket because it feels like you're carrying a pocket knife over there and that rectangular si uh, design will keep it not only from rolling if you lay it down and you know are shining onto something it actually makes it a little easier to like grip in your mouth if you had to go hands free for a moment uh, and it just makes for a much better slimmer profile to carry and it's not this big kind of weird boxy thing uh, or circular thing, tubular thing, tubular bra, coming out of your pocket. So great designing of the body and structure of uh, the flashlight. And they do have grips on the bottom, again, just like an OTF with some um, tactile jimping hit points. So it makes it very easy for you to grab and then engage. And so it's not slick and feels like it's sliding all over the place while you're trying to deploy the, the, the light. So that's a really big positive as well. When it's good to go and you turn it on, it'll have a green light underneath the switch for just a moment, letting you know that everything's good to go. You got plenty of juice. Then as it begins to wane and gets pretty low with about 30 minutes left of power, it will then turn red telling you, hey, it's time to recharge the battery. You plug it in, it will red while it is charging and then turn green when it is ready to be used again and that recharge uh, cycle is pretty quick maybe like two hours something like that maybe even less here this is completely removable and you can take the whole thing apart if it ever was to die i'm not sure if you're able to like send it in and get another battery you know replaced or if like when the battery finally does die and it won't keep it charging anymore you just got to toss it um, but you can take the whole device apart if necessary now let's talk about power and throw and there's benefits and there's some drawbacks to the way they design the flashlight. Now the standard 300 lumens is very functional. I can get quite a bit of illumination and it's actually a pretty wide throw with a good kind of center cone from what I've experienced. So you're getting a lot of illumination in I would argue about 50 yards. You can really see what's going on. You can see what's in front of you. It would definitely in close quarters, um, you know, like in a house or something like that really disorient, really blind. If you were to fire that and engage it at somebody, um, it would give you a few seconds, you know, with them being disoriented and, you know, losing their sight. So um, that's a benefit in that way. If you're looking at it more of a self-defense tool, engagement tool, something like that. Uh, and then, you know, just for me, more walking around campgrounds, using it in that capacity currently, it does a great job, easily able to see the area around me, see the woods around me, um, and really use the tool. Now, when you engage that thousand lumens, you can definitely tell that there's more of a punch, and that will absolutely disorient, that would absolutely um, give you the time that you need to engage uh, a target or something like that, if that's something that you uh, are looking to have this do and help you with. Um, but I didn't really notice all that much compared to the lower lumens for just walking through a campground. Yes, it brightens things up a little bit, and some of that is because of the candelas that it's using. It's using 1,200 at 300 lumens, and then it's using 3,000 at 1,000 lumens, which is not really enough to give you deep penetration uh, and far throw. So it has kind of a lower um, distance on the high setting, particularly, than maybe you would expect. And so what that means is it's drawing a lot but it's not really penetrating through foliage, giving you distance maybe that a lot of other thousand lumen flashlights are gonna give you. They're gonna be able to throw that light a lot further than this particular model will. And so in retrospect, if they had maybe dialed back the candles a little bit and maybe made this like 800 or say 700 on the high end, it would still probably do almost everything that the high does currently. And it would actually save you some battery life because again, 30 seconds for the high. And then if you leave it on low, it's or the standard 300, uh, you're gonna have about three hours and that's pretty consistent with what I'm seeing before I have to recharge it um, in the usage and the pull. So maybe you could have gotten another hour out of it so you just don't have to recharge it quite as often. 
um, if they had brought down the lumens just a little bit and maybe even kept the same candles or um, maybe brought the candles down just a little bit and you know drop the lumens just slightly you still would have gotten a ton of functionality and probably extended the battery life a little bit more so it's not a downer and it's very functional and does a lot for you but there probably was a way that they could have made it either a little bit more efficient or a little bit more powerful without losing too much in either run times or bringing up run times and not really noticing a drop in the actual penetration and throw of the light so pricing is a little bit of a gut punch. I think it's a little bit overpriced in my opinion, because this goes anywhere between 80 and $100. Just kind of depends on where you pick it up. We'll have a bunch of links for you guys below. Uh, so if this is making sense for you and the features outweigh the cost and any of the downsides that I've hit with you, um, do appreciate it when you use those hyperlinks that we have in that description box below. Uh, so this is widely carried, but at between 80 and $100, I mean, you're paying a pretty penny and you can get for that same price range, you can get much higher, more consistent lumens. Um, you can get different types of batteries with like multiple cells that you can carry from CR123s and then you can put in like an 18650 and swap them in and out. Um, you get a lot of different features, longer battery life for around that same price point. Uh, so the, in a lot of ways, unless this is really going to be a dedicated EDC flashlight, that you're gonna carry in your pocket regularly. Um, this isn't the, my first choice if I was building out a go bag, a, a hiking kit or backpacking kit, um, you know, something like that, a survival kit. This wouldn't be my first choice. This is, in my opinion, best suited for the on-body experience to be carried day in, day out because of the features that we've been hitting today. But the key features that this has are really unique to the market and are extremely functional. What it is intended to do, it absolutely does. And and I hope that Streamlight continues to go down this road, maybe fine tune this, maybe make like a smaller version that's even a little shorter, um, you know, and just see more features and just more capabilities in this kind of idea. So I think that Streamlight has absolutely hit the mark and made something unique that the industry and the market um, is really looking for. I am looking for, that's why I picked it up. That's probably why you're watching this video. So um, I look forward to hearing from you guys. What do you think? Uh, do you think that this is worth throwing in rotation? What's been your experience if you already own one? Leave those comments below. Uh, I know that it will help the Gideon's Tactical family here. Uh, and I just appreciate you guys so much. Hit that like button again. Check out the other video popping up. And again, subscribe if you're not yet a subscriber. Uh, and until next time, always remember, stay equipped, stay prepared. See you out there.